And a very good morning to you. It's Saturday the 9th of... Oh, flicks the switch. A 9th of November 2013. A warm welcome along. It's Chris Reardon with today's United Kingdom Talk. Sporting... Oh, I'm a bit low down, aren't I? Just a minute. Just a minute. There we are. Kind of a bit low down. Sporting my, my sensible jumper today because it's very chilly. Very chilly. But I'm pleased to say, not chilly enough to turn the heating on. Yes, boys and girls, my heating still has not been switched on. And why is this? Is he sitting here in very cold? Well, no, not really. For, for example, in this particular room, I've got three, um, three, uh, what are they called? Halogen lights beaming down on me as well as a couple of LED ones above but they don't put any heat and these put out some heat look you know if I just try to shade them with my hand you can see how dark it really is in here without my lights okay I have three halogen lamps television lamps beaming down upon me boys and girls beaming down beaming down like a sunshine in the sky it really is. So I've got those on. And of course, I've got a today. I've bought back out my sensible cardigan. Yes, with zip. I just literally two minutes ago, I thought, oh, it's a bit chilly in here. I'll go into the office, into the into the spare room. I've got a spare room. Uh, so if anyone ever wants to stay, people come and visit. I'm very, very lucky to have a spare room. Uh, and unfortunately, no one ever does come to visit. Very rarely. Only people like James Dean, you know, who might be doing something in London. And then he rings at James Dean, I must tell you, he does a show on another station called Tameside Radio, which is up in Manchester. It's one of those little community stations, which I think are brilliant. Not enough community stations here in the UK. They've got, or you go to Australia or America, places like that, they are all over the place. Community stations here in the UK are not allowed to make a profit. They are basically serving the community. And it's fantastic. They have little bits of local information. And you'd get on there information that they couldn't put on <coughs> uh, an independent local radio station. Even the, 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 the events that they would mention would be probably too small for the BBC local stations as well. Things like Scout Jumble Sales. You know, where you can go and pick up uh, uh, old clothes and things like that. Anything like that. Jobs. Perhaps it was a job, you know, maybe I wanted a cleaner. I can, you know, I could put an advert perhaps on a, um, on a community radio station. Chris Reardon, international celebrity, is looking for a cleaner. I mean, they'd be queuing up at the door. Uh, the trouble is, uh, it would attract the wrong sort of people, I think, that, you know. Yeah, they wouldn't be so much interested in the job. They want to start going through things. Oh, is that what he's got? Oh. Oh, that, oh is, it, is that what he does? Oh, what's that on his computer? And all this business, you know, nosy people. You get those often, you know, when you're selling a house or something like that, you know, you get people come round who have no interest, in, no interest at all in buying the property. They just want to have a look at the house. Nosy people do. Dreadful. And I could just see it now, advertising for a cleaner. They they would be queuing up here. All right, OK. So, oh, what's this gadget over here? Do? And they start touching things, wouldn't they? And they'd probably, you know, they'd probably try and sneak in, in the morning while I'm asleep, to catch me, you know, getting out of bed naked. Because I do sleep naked. Do you sleep naked? Oh, yes, even in this weather. Because I have found a way of heating my uh, bedroom and not having the heating on in the house. Now, you're wondering how I'm doing that now, aren't you? Well, that's not for today's show. Not for today's show, OK? That is going to come next week. I've decided I want to do a little bit more on the show. I want to start filming little bits and putting them in as well. Don't worry, my darlings, those of you that just listen to the show won't miss anything. Although you're terribly scared of missing something, aren't you? No, it will all be done in audio-friendly format because this is primarily a radio show, isn't it? You know, there's a few people out there who, who download it. They download it and play it in their cars. Oh, talking of podcasts and download type things, those of you who like all things LBC, I must tell you there is a brand new LBC app. An app 
I, I like that word, an app. Okay, let me just bring it up here on my iPhone 5. No, pardon? No, 5, not 5S. Why would I want to upgrade to a 5S? Just because it's a little bit faster and it's got one of those finger... Uh, my name is not my best friend, Ronnie. Oh, no, of course he, of course he's got one, yes! He had one within two days of them releasing it. Yep, he sold his old one on eBay <clears throat> for a couple of hundred pounds, and he put the new one, and I think it was about 200 pounds out of pocket, which to me is madness. There's nothing wrong with a 5. Why do you need to go to a 5S? I mean, I, I want to see, I want to see some vast improvement before I upgrade this to the next one. You know, not just a little thing where you put your finger on so it can read your fingerprints, or a slightly faster processor. They say it's much quicker, don't they? They say it's much quicker than the iPhone, but the Apple people say it's much quicker than iPhone 5S, don't they? Well, I mean, this is fast. You know, look, look, push the LBC app, for example, and it comes straight up. And there are my subscribed podcasts on LBC. And the thing is, the, the reason this is so good, this new app, um, on your uh, 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 for the iPhone, presumably for the Android system as well, is I no longer have to download the LBC podcasts on the computer and then transfer them to the iPhone. Now, I can just browse for the person I want. Let's choose someone else. Um, Andrew Castle, who's he? I don't even know him. Anthony Davis, he's quite good. Boris Johnson, he's good. Clive Ball, fantastic. Christo, I, I don't think so, dear. Christo, no, thank you very much. Christo uh, on LBC seems to be obsessed with talking about religion all the time. And how we are now a secular... In fact, there's a lot of the presenters on there who just seem to be totally anti-religion of any sort at all. Have you noticed that? And it keeps coming, and I'm sorry, whenever I hear the word religion mentioned now on LBC, I switch off because I'm sick to death of hearing the same old stories going round and round, and they need proof, and this, well, some of us don't need proof, dear. Some of us don't be, need proof. They do go on and on about a couple of subjects. One of them's religion. Well, what's the other one? Oh, racism, that's the other one. Same subjects crop up time and time again. I can understand almost the racism one that keeps coming up, but why, why, why keep knocking people's bloody religions all the time? They do. They go on, and they've got nothing else to talk about. Christo is a is a prime example of that one. Anyway, shan't be downloading him because it's oh, because it's so boring at night, so boring at night. And uh, who else have we got? Various other. Ian Collins. He's got Ian Dow. Oh God, no, thank you. One of the most boring voices on the planet ever, Ian Dow, who I have mentioned once or twice before. So anyway, let's choose someone I haven't got because I've, al I've already subscribed to Steve Allen, <laughs> the best talk show host in the entire world. Yes. I subscribed to Nick Abbott. Very, very funny. I've only just discovered him a couple of weeks ago. Nick Abbott, hilarious, LBC. <clears throat> And I haven't subscribed to what's Anthony Davis. I'm going to subscribe. To, oh, Boris Johnson, eh? Oh, let's subscribe to him just just for the sake of showing you how it works, right? So download the LBC Podcasts app. Sign yourself up. Oh, it will cost you, by the way. It's I think twelve pounds a year or six pounds. I can't remember how much it is now, <clears throat> but it costs that. And for 12, and it's, I'm, sh I'm sure it's no more than 12 pounds a year. And for 12 pounds a year, you download as much as you want. It's fantastic. Really good value. So, so you've downloaded your thing. You've done your subscription. You, you get your presenters up. You want Boris Johnson. You just tap little Boris Johnson's face. Bless his heart. Up comes a little picture of him trying to look mean and moody. But we know he's a bit of a bit of a <laughs> well, I nearly swore then. I nearly swore that I just managed to stop myself, boys and girls. Uh, but um, we know Boris Johnson is a bit of a buffoon, and we like that. We do like that. He could be an entertainer. I'm sure one day he will have his own YouTube chat show just like me, boys and girls. Anyway, so you do that, and then you move up, and look, you simply hit subscribe like that, and that's it. There he comes on your other subscription pages. So, you would then go onto your 
edit your your subscription thing your where it says my podcasts then you click one of their faces let's click steve allen's face and there come all the podcasts up there and you choose what you want okay so i haven't downloaded his show for the 6th of november it says christmas lights so what i'll do is now how do i do this click that there click the christmas lights one and click ah oh, there we are click download right da 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 and nothing's happening oh there we are downloading 55 65 70 show downloaded that's it it's on there how easy is that and as i say that's well worth it okay so much easier than having to download a show um on your computer and then transfer it across to the uh, iPhone afterwards. So highly recommended the LBC uh, podcasts there. All right. Uh, just coming up to 11 minutes past 12. You can join in the show by email. Chris at UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. Chris at UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. Uh, we are also live on Saturday, the 9th of November 2013. OK, if that's the date you are listening or watching to the show now and it's just coming up to 12 minutes past 12 in the afternoon, then you are indeed with us live and you can join in live, boys and girls, by two methods. I have a Skype. My Skype username is all one word. Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. All right. C H R I S. R E A R D O N. Or by phone. 020 8133 OK? And uh, we've got a call already coming in this morning from Millie in Minnesota. We're going over to Millie in Minnesota in the US of A. Any second now? There we are. Good morning, Millie. Hello. How are you, Chris? All right, let me just push you up a little bit more. Say hello again. Hi, Chris. How are you? Very well, thank you, Millie. What's the news in Minnesota? <laughs> well, first of all, we did have our first snowstorm earlier this week. Oh, oh you've had that already, have you? Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank goodness it's already melted because I... Ooh, I do not like the winters here. No, neither do I. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I do have some news to share, but let me give everybody a little bit of backstory first. Yes. Um, you, I've been with the show since about mm, 2008 now. Eight, nine, seven, eleven, twelve, oh, only five years. I know, I know, I know. But... The first time Chris Chris has had me on as a guest on his show twice. Yes. The first time was, I believe, if I'm remembering right, 7 February 09. Right. And I mentioned, at, and, you know, the idea was to give everybody an idea of what it was like to live with live in a wheelchair yes as i do and at at some point during the show i mentioned and i didn't plan to but i trusted trusted you enough that i mentioned that one of the things that hits me hard at times is the fact that i'm never going to be able to be a mom yes i remember you saying that many years ago yeah yes and that still continues to be the case of up course, until, of course it does, yeah. Yeah. Up and um but that's all about to change because a week ago this past Friday I got a message from one of my friends over over your side of the pond. Yes. Um they their daughter is going to have have a baby. She's due next month. And I was asked to be a godmother. To oh, lovely. Be, yeah. Because uh, you're so coming in April, aren't you? I am, yes. Um, Posh Hotel again? 
Uh, oh yeah, yes, the, actually, the Waldorf, the Waldorf, isn't it? Waldorf Hilton, yes. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> um, I can only dream of afford to being able to afford to stay in some places, Miss Millie. Well, Chris, you know, in all seriousness, the reason you know when I travel, the reason we choose high-end hotels is because they are often the most willing to accommodate the things I need. Yes, yes. I remember when we went to that other hotel. Now, what was it called? The one in Hoban? Uh, the, Chancer the Chancery Court. Chancery Court. When I went in there, I was quite amazed that you had all your equipment up there in that room. Yes. And um, the high-end hotels are usually very willing to accommodate all of the stuff that I need. And that is why when I travel to Britain, or in fact anywhere else, we often choose these high-end um, yes. venues. It's not, it isn't, you know, because I have all this, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of money to throw around. I, you know, I've been saving for the past five years to do, to do this trip. But this is often why we do this. Yes. To, you know, to choose uh, the high-end hotels. Anyway, um, what I wanted to ask you, Chris, um, I'm not going to be able to see my goddaughter off as often as I would like, but I know of a way that I can still, you know, be connected to her. And one of the things that I'm thinking of is, you know, reading nursery rhymes to her and books as she gets older by using audio recording software. Now, I need to know from you, what is the best free audio recording software that I can use? Oh, yes. Um, are you, you got, what Windows have you got? Windows 7 Home Premium right now. You'll already have one on there. There will be a sound recorder somewhere on that computer. All right. Um, click start. Okay. Search. Yep, I've, I've, I've got it. And then just type in sound recorder. Sound. Whoops. Sound. But in all seriousness, Chris, when I was asked... Is that there? About, huh? Is it there? One second. Um, I have I have a sound record. I have something that says sound recorder right now. Right, double click it. Go and click it. All a, right. And a little bar will come up. Yep, I see it. All right. Is there is there a green bar moving up and down? Uh, I haven't hit the start recording button, but yes, I can see the green bar. And, it, and it's moving up and down as, as, as the sound comes out, is it? Yes, it is. Right, okay. If you click, I tell you what, you can, you, can, you can play with this now while you're chatting to me. Click start record now. Oh, okay, it's... All right, I, I and a little it. numbers will start go, counting up. And yep. the, the green bar will start moving up and down. Sometimes the green bar actually doesn't need to move very far. Can you see yeah. that? And it's not. No. And it, I do see it, but it's not moving very far at all. Yeah, that's it. There's your sound recorder. Okay. okay. Now, when you finish the sound, well, we can do it. We can do it now if you want. Just click stop record, and then it will ask you if you if you want to save it. Okay. Great. Done that. All right. Gotcha. Has that stopped? Yep. Now it is, and I'm seeing it. It immediately gave me a save as option yes. and then the fi file okay. name. And so you now, you now, all you need to do is save it to somewhere on your computer. Tell it where you want it to save it. I'm sure you know how to do that, the save as right. thing. Yep. And then mm -hmm. when you finish with the call, just find it, uh, double click, and you'll be able to play your sound file. And of course, send it to anyone. Great. Okay. How easy was that? And that was, that was simple. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. I never would have found it if, you oh, know, without... Oh, so, without, you, know, without. I, I, you know, I'm still learning things on here all the time. All the time. There was a lady um, uh, who used to sing at some of the venues that I worked, and she was on the computer last night. Because this week, uh, last week, or was it the week before? The week before last, I'm very happy to announce that I managed to upgrade my own memory. 
Yes, I did see that stand. Yeah. So- yeah, so what was happening is that there were a couple of programs that I was using that were using up all the memory data to 100%, and then the p- computer would really run slowly. And you'd, you'd have to walk away and let it do whatever job it is you wanted it to do, and then come back 10 minutes later. That's the only how, way you could do it. How well, annoying is that? I upgraded the memory from 4 gig to 16, and now. Right. The problem solved doesn't do it anymore, so I'm quite pleased about that. And it's quite easy to do. All you've got to do is take it not on a laptop. I wouldn't... Well, actually, yeah, the uh, laptop's really quite easy as well. But easiest on a tower computer. You just take the side off, pull out the chips that you're taking out, and put in the other ones. But you must earth yourself. A lot of people forget to earth themselves. That is, you either um, keep touching the chassis of the um, computer while right. it's plugged in, incidentally. Okay, because if you take the plug out, then there's no earth anymore. So it's mm-hmm. it's got to remain plugged in. But you obviously, you know, avoid the live parts. Really, um, that that really there are no live parts that you can get. And generally, where the memory um, chips are, there's not usually any live parts around there. So you're quite safe. Um, so right. keep touching the case, or you can get a little strap, and um, that you put around your wrist. And you, 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 you click it together, and then mm. the other end has got this like little crocodile clip, which is a bit like a um, uh, a washing... What are those things called now? A clothes peg. A bit like a clothes peg, you know. And then you, yeah. you open that and click that onto a piece of metal. Again, it could be the chassis case. And then you put your new chips in, because otherwise you can damage the new chips with static. Ugh, yeah. that's not good. No, so I was quite pleased that I've done that. And we're always all... Uh, and, it, and it worked, so I'm quite pleased. Um, but yeah. uh, Sam was on there the other day, and she says she has the most terrible trouble with computers. She buys, she keeps buying new ones, she has them a couple of weeks, and then something doesn't work. And because she has no experience at all, she then has to either send them away or someone has to come round at 50 quid an hour and sort it out. And, mm. you know, I mean... That, I, I was a bit like that myself when I first got my first computer. I um, remember. <laughs> oh, it's terrible, terrible. I, but I generally now, if something goes wrong, I can generally sort it out now. Yeah. But I've got to tell you, Chris, in all seriousness, it took me about two seconds. Yes. To to um, accept, um, you know, when I was asked to be one of the three godmothers. To of this, course. This of course. Girl that that is due to arrive. Oh, it's brilliant. I oh mean, my Ma- gosh. Marge, I... Marge in Oklahoma says um, there is another program called Order City. But you don't yes. really, I don't think you really need that because, I mean, this is, all you want to do is talk, isn't it? Talk and save. That's it. You won't, right. you don't uh, need to edit it at all. Just, yeah. just, 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 just record it straight off. Click the stop yeah. button, save it and send it. That's the easiest way to do it. Yeah. Because what I'm thinking is, you know, obviously I'm not going to get over to the UK as often as I would like. Of course. But with technology the way it is now, you know, there's no reason why I can't record things to send to my little... You know, to send to my little goddaughter, and so you've got, that she'll at least know my voice. And you've got the Skype as well, of course. When she yes. gets older, you can do the live. You've got the little camera there. I'm sure she's got one there. Yeah, ev- everyone's getting these things now, aren't they? We've even yep. got we've even got tellies now. My niece uh, Tracy, she's got a telly which has actually got a camera built into the top. And I, uh, and whenever she's got the telly on, I can Skype her, and I come up on her television. Wow! Yeah, which kidding. is really good. Oh yeah, so if you buy when whenever you buy a new telly, look out for that. It's a it's a smart telly. You can, if you've got a, a, a flat, I'm sure you've got a flat screen there. You can actually get a camera, Logitech, do a camera now, which will sit above your television and just plugs into one of the HDMI sockets, mm-hmm. and that will work as a Skype thing. But the cam- they're very, very expensive. They're like £180, um, 230 40 50 And to be honest, I don't think it's worth it. You know, yeah, not, I, not I for just a small that. camera for Skype. That's, that's a lot of money. So yeah, it is. I, I wouldn't bother with that. But you've got the camera on your um, laptop anyway, so you can do it like that, can't you? Right. But yeah. I'll tell you what, it, it, it's, you know, it filled such a huge hole yes. that was always there, you know. And, you know, I'm not ashamed to admit it. I choked up when I was asked yeah. 
Um, you know, life can surprise you. Um, oh, yeah. Sometimes it can give you nasty surprises, but in this case, it gave me a really good one. It was a nice surprise. Yeah. And from now on, you know, holidays like Mother's Day and such hmm. are not going to be as difficult for me yeah. Yeah. as as it as they used to be because now I'm going to have an opportunity to do some, some of, if not all of the things, yeah, you know, I'll yeah. be able to be a part, you know, just like you are with, with, um, Harry and, and George. Yes. Oh yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. Little Evie. It's just, yeah. it's going to be great. I'm really excited and Good. really looking forward to that. Good. Oh, right, then darling, well, lovely to speak to you tonight, Millie. Yep. And Oh, my mom, my mom said to say hello. Hello, mom. Uh, she watches here. the recording, doesn't she? Yep, she does. Good. And um, you did say I need to, I need to check with you. Uh, you did say the seventh of April would be good for you, for 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 you and me and my mom yeah, and auntie just to a get minute, together. Let me, let me check that. April the 7th, which is a Monday. Yes, yeah. A Monday would be good. A Monday would be good. Okay, so that's the 7th of April. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, I will let her know. Lovely. And thanks for calling in, Millie. Yep, and thanks for the help with the audio stuff, too. Nice to talk to you, darling. Try it out now. Go and try it out. I will. Cheerio. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye, Millie. There we are, Millie in uh, Minnesota. In the U.S. of A. She's coming over next week. Do you know, I've just, I've just put my hand in my, um, in this old, this old jumper. Right? I say it's an old jumper. It's about a year old. So I got it out of the, um, out of the cupboard just before we were due on today because it was a little bit cold in here. I've just put my hands in the pockets and there's tissues here. Look, tissues from last year. How awful is that? My God, what awful, what millions of old bacteria will be hanging around on those, dear? Let me throw those away immediately. There's also cat hairs from last year. Oh, never mind. <laughs> We're quite normal here, aren't we? Hey, quite normal. Um, we found a new, I found a new barber's. I'm pleased to say, boys and girls, I've had my hair cut. It's even shorter than the 0.5. I've now got it a quarter, which is just one up from zero. I don't think I'm going to have the zero. So basically, those of you with audio only, it looks like I've got that sh that really short haircut where it looks like someone's got a felt tip pen and put lots of little dots on your head. That's the um, that's that's the haircut I've got now, and I was very pleased um, to find a barber's in Reading, which is like the biggest town uh, nearest to Bracknell, the biggest main town nearest to Bracknell where I live, uh, called. <laughs> called, called called King's Barbers. Very pleased to find that. And uh, I went along with my best mate Ron yesterday because he wanted his beard all trimmed up. So we hadn't been there before. I found this place by typing into Google Barbers or, or Turkish Barbers in Berkshire. Because Turkish Barbers are brilliant. They really are. It's all very well. You know, you go, you go to any sort of unisex hairdresser and, yeah, they do cut your hair. But I, I, I find it all a bit slapdash, really. You know, they do the job properly, I suppose, and that's it. And, and, and you get your hair cut. I mean, I went, there was, there's my closest hairdressers I went to once, at £10 it was, which uh, isn't excessive at all. But I was in the chair about 10 minutes and she was done. She got this thing out. Quick bit of straight. Thank you very much. £10. I thought, bloody hell, that was quick. <laughs> you know. I mean, how can you do a job that quick? But where my mate used to live in London, he li lives near me now. He used to live in London. There used to be a list of little Turkish barbers that we went to in Whitecross Street, which is quite near Old Street, in uh, sort of towards the east of... Um, uh, London, and they they did they did a wonderful job of hot towels and and, and 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 knives and all that business. Really good job. I mean, the, the one at the the one nearest to me didn't even have a knife. You know, she just did the stretch, and that was it. So anyway, so I typed in Turkish barbers and up came this one that King's barbers. I thought, well, I'll give it a quick ring. So I rang them on Wednesday. I said, do you do the hot towels and the shaving? And they said, yes, we do. OK, I'll come down. So that was that. Now, I asked about the shaving because when I was in Rome, 
me and Ron went to Rome uh, a few well, it was a couple of months ago, about a month, six, six weeks ago now, and a lovely time in Rome. And we, f we went to this Italian barber's place. And I did tell you about this on a previous show. Anyway, went in, and I've had, for the first time ever, one of those wet shaves, you know, with a knife, the very sharp knife, or whatever it is, I don't know, was it a blade? I think they changed the blade every time. And I uh, had one of those, and it was, oh, I felt, you know, afterwards, I thought my face, oh, I felt so good. And it was all soft and lovely, really nice. So ever since then, I've been searching for another one, uh, I haven't, no, not really, I haven't been searching for another one, but I've been thinking about it, I must find one, so I did. So, King's Mothers, so we get, so he asked me for the postcode, which I give him, and he puts it in his sat-nav in his car, because he's got one of them flash BMWs. I keep saying to myself that I don't want to go in a car with my best mate, because I hate his driving. It's too fast, it's too close to cars in front, he doesn't give cyclists enough, for, I'm a really miserable bastard if I'm a side driver. I really am. I am. I hate his driving. He knows, and I try not to comment. In fact, on the way yesterday, I was sitting in the car, and I kind of, how can I put it, I zoned out. You know, I kind of went like that. And he's, he's rabbiting away in my ear. And I'm kind of listening to him, but I'm trying not to take notice of, of the road in front of me. It was pissing, oh, beg your pardon, it was pouring down with rain, really pouring down with rain yesterday. And he was driving too car fast, too close to a large lorry in front of me on the, on the motorway. And there was another lorry there, and he's over to, oh, God's sake. And I kind of, I try to zone out so I'm not aware of what's around me. With my eyes open, you know, I can see anything, but you zone out. Do you know what I mean? And he's chatting away. He said, Chris, Chris, are you listening? I said, yes. He said, well, why aren't you saying? You're very quiet, dear. I said, I'm trying to zone out. Well, why? I said, you don't want to know. No, no tell me what. Okay, I'm only telling you because you may ask. You're driving too fast, too good. And he didn't say anything. I keep telling myself, right, if we're going to go out, just get my car out, and we go in my car, and I'll drive. You know. His boyfriend's exactly the same. He's even worse. On and off the bloody brake all the time. And that's the other thing. He's on and off the brake all the time. And his boyfriend. On and off the brake all the time. I barely use my brakes. I don't go that fast and that close to someone in front of me that I don't need to use the brakes. I just come off the accelerator. Is it an age thing? Well, he should know. He's 40 as well. What was I like? When did I slow down? I think... It's got to be said, when I was in my 20s and 30s, I drove too fast. Absolutely. Hands up, I did it too. I think I slowed down about three years ago. On the motorway, 60 mile an hour, doesn't bother me. You know, and these dickheads, often, I, you know, and of course I'm in the correct lane on the left-hand side, right? 60 mile an hour on the motorway. And still, you get idiots come up behind you, flashing the lights to make you go fast. Overtake, dear. That's what the other two lanes are for. Overtake. Mind you, coming home last night from work. Cool, oh, dear me. Three o'clock in the morning, there was this bloke on the inside. Like, he was doing 40. Jeez. <laughs> I'm not that bad. Anyway, so he's typed in this information into his sat nav. And we've, we've gone on the motorway towards Reading, which is where it is. So we've passed the first Reading turn off. Then we've passed the second, and there's only two. And I thought, oh, where's this taking us? Oh, it's sat nav. It's probably taking us around a load of traffic. Oh, well, fair enough. You know, OK. Anyway, so then it took us off the motorway, and we started going through open countryside, dear. Beautiful little villages. But I'm like, well, where on earth are we going? So we ended up, and then the sat nav says, you are now at your destination. We're in the middle of bloody nowhere. I said, well, how's this happened? He says, oh... I don't know. I said, well, I did wonder. I said, I thought this was in the main Reading Town Centre. <laughs> anyway, so we bought it up on the, um, on the mobile phone. And it, was, it, was, it was so remote, OK? There was no phone signal. So we had to drive back a bit further towards the motorway to get the blooming phone signal. <laughs> I've typed it into the mobile phone, bought up the um, uh, postcode. It turns out he's put the wrong blooming postcode in. Oh, okay. So once again, we were lost. How many times does that bloke get me lost? 
Honestly, um, to be honest, I'd be easier. It would be easier if I did the navigation. Same in Rome. I'm sure and he had this map in Rome. He kept bringing this blooming map out all the time. And we, we'd do three steps and then the map would come out. And, oh, for God's sake, let's get on with this. You know, but I didn't have the map. And I thought, oh, I, I won't ask him for it. Just get on with it. Awful. So we got lost. Anyway, we got there in the end. Um, <laughs> you know, we typed in this um, the proper postcode, and we were still half an hour away. But of course, we'd come the wrong way, so we had to go back again. Hopeless, absolutely hopeless. So we found this barber's in the end, parked up, um, and it was right near a little pub that I I went. I only went once, the Winfred Arms, which is a gay pub in Reading. There's only one, I think. Uh, others have tried and failed. So this this is in Reading. It was right opposite this place. I thought, oh right, okay. I know, well, so, and I thought I thought I recognised the name King Street, which of course was right in the centre of town where I thought it was. Anyway, so we went in there immediately as soon as we walked in, and we thought, how clean it is in here. And they had got a, a big, big uh, plasma TV screen on the wall at the end, and then each of the seats has got a smaller television attached next to the mirror. So you can watch the telly while you're having your hair cut. How fabulous is that? And they were showing Top Gear with, um... Oh, who's that bloke who keeps speaking out of turn? I do like him, actually. Can't remember. Jeremy Clarkson, that's it. Jeremy Clarkson. Oh, got to say good morning to Terry H, sorry, who says I've shared you on Facebook this morning. Thank you, Terry. I do like being shared by as many people as possible. I really do. Anyway, so you can sit there and watch the telly, so that's good. So this, this, this lad comes out, oh my god, he was gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. This boy comes out, and I, 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 and I sat up, and then Ronnie jumps up from the seat and rushes into the chair before I can bloody well get to it. As usual, you know. Oh dear. So I missed that one. So he starts working on Ronnie. And uh, I'm talking to the boy as well. And the boy's from the Lebanon. And he's doing his beard and all this. And then he calls someone. And then another bloke comes out who was much older. I mean, closer to my own age and quite fat. You know. But a nice bloke. <laughs> a very nice bloke. And uh, he starts doing me. And then he does the shave and all that. And with the cutthroat. And he does it twice. And when they do these wet shaves in barbers in proper barbers not not hairdressers where they got silly little girls walking around nee, 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 and they chat 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 all the bloody time shut your mouth woman shut up oh i can't stand it so have you got a girlfriend where are you going on holiday this year and all that old cut just shut up and do your job dear i can't stand my hair being cut by young birds who don't know when to shut their mouths I'll do the talking, thank you. <laughs> um, so he's doing all this. And I was very pleased. And uh, he was doing a little bit of talking about, I said, how long you been here? Two and a half years. How did you find us? So I told him on Google and all that. And um, I was very, very, and it was lovely and warm in there. Oh, it was nice. They did have that heating up lot high. <laughs> Maybe that's because they're from the Lebanon. But really, really nice people. Damn good job. I was in that seat for half hour, 35, 40 minutes maybe, having my hair cut and uh, my shave and all that. And a really good job. And by the time he finished, oh, it was as smooth as anything. It was smooth as my forehead. There were no hairs sticking up at all. Not one. I go like that. And there's a few up there now because obviously you know, we've had a we've had a day now, haven't we? Since I had my um, my my wet shea, but I was so impressed. Had the hot towel came out. Oh, lovely. Really, really nice. They they actually do a haircut, facial massage, and shave for eighteen pounds, which I think is damn good value. Actually, I think that's pretty good. The only thing I didn't like, he had this stick which he said was sea salt. And after the first shave, he started pushing this, and it, it was hurt, it was scratching me. Do you know what I mean? I fe it felt like it was scratching me, but obviously it wasn't. There was no blood or anything. And he, kept, he was pushing this into my face. I wasn't keen on that. So next time, I might ask not to have that, but I would certainly be going back down there again. This uh, this new this this barber's in Reading, so very pleased to be pleased about that. It's just a show we didn't get there much a little bit earlier, really. Uh, messages. 
Marge in Oklahoma says she wants to win a free iPod watch, Chris Reardon, and say the secret word. Bet you would get tons of viewers that way. I want one. What, you want me to give away, start giving away prizes? We can't afford to do that here, dear. How much money do you think we've got here? We can't start giving away prizes willy-nilly. I beg your pardon. I don't think so. Marge also says, I had my hair cut once by an obese, highly pregnant woman. She laid her belly on my chest. Oh, God, how awful. <laughs> she laid her belly on my chest as she gave me a perm. It was quite an experience. And the perm burned my hair. This was quite a few years back in the 80s. Oh, how awful. Yeah, I was watching this program um, <coughs> on Channel 5, I think it was, here in the UK, uh, on Thursday night. I recorded it on Thursday night. About two, It was called Too Fat to Fly. And it was about people who were quite overweight. And they have really terrible problems on planes. Like, Because those seats are bad enough. I mean, I hate them. Well, I don't, I don't go in those economy seats anymore. I can't stand it. If I save up for the other seat for the business class seat which is very expensive but if I if I can't get that seat I don't go it's as simple as that simple as that I'm not sitting anymore ever in an economy seat it's so uncomfortable it's untrue I did it coming back from Vegas on American Airlines it was awful really awful so uncomfortable and you know I'm I'm a little bit overweight not much by maybe a stone stone and a half perhaps but these people are like 20 stone and they're squeezing into these seats. Oh, they must be so uncomfortable. And not only that, and then they try and bring the table down. You know the table? Where you put your food and drink on, and they bring that down, and they put something on there. And they can't, the table won't go down. It sits like that, above their stomachs. You know? I'm not making fun of them. It's just so uncomfortable. And I, it was very sad. And sometimes, one bloke, he got on this plane, Right? He was sitting on one side, and the bloke come, I think he was sitting at the back, that's it, he was sitting at the back of this plane, and the, the steward came down and said, I'm sorry sir, you're going to have to move, uh, because the plane, the plane is, 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 is unbalanced. So they had, to, they had to move him to another seat, in front, and everyone's watching, everyone's watching dear. That's dreadful, isn't it? Dreadful. And there was another... Man, either man or woman, I can't remember, who was on, on a flight. And he couldn't sit in this particular seat. Um, and he asked to be moved to another seat. I think there was someone next to him as, as well who was complaining. Because, you know, when you're big and these seats are so tiny, you actually uh, are kind of overlap into someone else's seat. It can't be very pleasant for the person sitting next to you. So he asked for another seat, and then, would you come this way, sir? So they, they come this way, you know, in front of everyone. Now, that's the embarrassment. The whole plane is watching this happen. And they took him uh, to the exit and down the stairs. Could you come this way, sir? And then they got him off the plane and then told him that he couldn't go on that plane because he was too big and he'd have to buy another seat. He'd have to buy two seats. You know... There's th th both, both, um, I think, you know, the fault is not just the person, though. It's not just the person's fault for being so overweight. These bloody seats on the planes, I swear, are getting smaller and smaller. They pack so many. Have you ever been in an economy seat on a plane? It's awful. Your legs are bent up and you, there's just no room to move. Oh, it's just one of the worst experiences of travelling. That's why I save up and I go in the, in, in the... I call them the posh seats. They're not quite first class. They're, they're below first class. First class is really... Uh, it's prohibitively expensive. Prohibitively expensive. But you can save up for the business class seat. It is much more expensive than the, than, than the um, economy seat. But it is affordable if you save up and perhaps, you know, cut back a bit on the hotel. You know, do you really need to go in a four-star hotel? Two-star is fine. Unless you intend to go on holiday and sit in a bloody hotel for two weeks. For two weeks. Do you, is that what you're going to do? No, of course it's not. 
cut back on something else, I highly recommend and you upgrade your seat to the business class. Or in Virgin, I think it's... um. In Virgin, I think it's called Upper Class. They, they only have two classes. Econ oh, no, I have Economy, Premium Economy, and the other one. It's so uncomfortable. And there was another bloke. There was another bloke on there. And he, he had booked the exit seat, right? So he got there and he sat down in this exit seat. And it, it, it was better than sitting there because he got that room at the front, you see. But then he realised he couldn't do the seatbelt up, so he asked for an extension, an extension seatbelt. Right? So she says, "Oh, I'm sorry, sir. If you want an extension seatbelt, you won't be able to sit in that seat." All oh, right. So they had to move him elsewhere, you know, somewhere very uncomfortable. But you can kind of understand that from the point of the um, airlines. If you're going to sit in an emergency seat, you must be totally agile and able, and you must be able to move quickly. Because if you can't, you're blocking the exit in the event of an emergency for everyone else to get in. You cannot use your size or perhaps a disability to sit in an exit seat. That person sitting there must be agile. And very quick to move. Because you're going to have to open. Sometimes you've got to be the one to open the exit door. And chuck it and, you know, and jump out. And get out of the way of everyone else quickly. Awful. Awful. So uh, I did watch that program. All right. Um, yes. Uh, I've, I've got another idea for the show, actually. I'd like to start doing kind of. Oh, I've got another one now. Sorry, I'm just looking. I do try and check as many different ways of people sending in messages as possible. Because some people, they send them while the show's live. Some people, they send on um, uh, uh, Facebook. Some people send on email. Some people send on Skype. It's, it's quite difficult uh, keeping an eye on them all at the same time. I was just looking at Facebook. I keep getting requests friend requests from young ladies and they're gonna she's gonna be in california i know she is just a minute let me check oh no this one's in denmark denmark and they're always ladies with low-cut dresses with boobs hanging out trying to look sexy so i don't know why i'm obviously being targeted here boys and girls i'm being targeted by these by these young ladies and none of them they're not real i'm sure they're not real people they're they're people trying to get um to get to to, to perform some sort of scam it starts off let me read one of the messages okay let me see i've probably got one here somewhere one minute Here we go. Here's a typical message from one of these girls, right? This is from a young lady called Anna Stowe, who's sitting there. She's got glasses on in her profile picture with her tongue out suggestively. <laughs> it says, Hi, how are you doing? My name is Anna. I was checking on my Facebook when I come across your profile. Well, I will be very happy to know you more better. Just want you to know that I'm looking for a relationship that will last forever. You can get back to me if you're interested so that we can get to know each other better and see where it will lead us. Hope to hear from you soon. And then please contact me by email and not through Facebook. And you get a Yahoo email address usually. Bloody old con artists these are. It's probably some old codger sitting there pulling down pictures of various different girls off the internet, trying to look sexy, and then they ask you for money. Or your bank details, or something like that. I mean, it, it bemuses me how people actually get caught up in all this old crap, and they start sending them their bank details, this, that and the other. You know, I must be getting four or five of these a day now. Here's another one. Jesse. Jessie Bartimus. Now, where is she? Just a minute. This one is in... Oh, this one's in Illinois. Elgin in Illinois. There she is. Her front page is a... <laughs> She's got about 10 inches of makeup. On, and she's standing in front of the camera, pushing her breasts out towards the camera. 
Ugly as hell, to be honest. Ugly as hell. And let's see her message. What does she write? Um, hello. How are you doing there? I'm happy to meet on here. I want to know that you are my first contact on here. What a load of old crap! And I would like to know more about you and see where it will lead us to. I'm honest, loving, caring, daring, decent, kind-hearted, considerate, open-minded, understanding and loyal, self-confident, intellectual, trustworthy, down-to-earth, to everyone in life and generous laugh with anyone to make people happy and lively. What a load of crap! You're full of it! You can email me on... Uh, let me see, is it a, yes, is a Yahoo address. I will be waiting to hear from you soon. Will you have a bloody long wait, my love? <laughs> Occasionally, I have answered. And uh, I have answered with something like, you know, go away, you silly little girl. Do you really think... And then they, they come back with F you or something like that. <laughs> the thing is, presumably... People do actually fall for this. But why? I never used to get these messages. I'm getting five or six of these a day now. Unbelievable. Don't forget, if you want to join in the show, you can do. My email is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at uh, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Now, I've had an idea, boys and girls. Um, I'd like to start introducing perhaps sketches or little films into the show. Oh, now, I should have lined up something here for you. Oh, sorry, let me just... Um, now, where on earth have I put that now? I've forgotten where I've put it. Uh, oh, I know where it is. It's in... Um, it's got to be in United Kingdom Talk videos, I think. Is it there? Ah, oh, there it is. There it is. Put that there. Okay. Is that going to work? Yeah, I think that'll work. I'd like to start introducing uh, little videos into the show that I might record during the week. Kind of little sketches, perhaps some funny things, anything like that. The thing is coming up with the ideas. Um... Generally, I might sound funny. I, my ideas seem to come to me in the swimming pool, and then, <laughs> and then by the time I finish swimming, you know, I've forgotten them again. So, if you've got any ideas of perhaps little funny sketches or something, something that I could do in like a two or three minute video, then do let us know on the email. Any ideas like that at all? Uh, you might want to say, or oh, or oh Chris, perhaps you could uh, go to a fountain, take all your clothes off, and jump in naked. Well, I won't be showing anything like that, I'm afraid, boys and girls. But you, you get the general idea. Um, so if you've got any ideas like that for, for little sketches, um, or perhaps you could go to the supermarket and show us how the checkout works, you know, the self-checkout, something like that. I keep meaning to do that, don't I? I keep forgetting to do that. Trouble is, you know, if you, if you want to do stuff like this, you generally got, got to ask permission. You've got to ask permission of the supermarket. And that can be, oh, no, I don't really want you filming in here and this, that and the other. A load of our rubbish. So if you've got any idea for sketches, please let us know on the email, OK? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Any idea for little sketches, little, little mini videos that I can then uh, bring into the show as part of the show? Rather than me just sitting here for an hour or so and chatting non-stop. Trying to make it a little bit more interesting. Always open to other ideas. If you've got any ideas, I know like some people um, uh, also suggest uh, that I bring other people into the studio with me. And that's always, always, uh, always possible. You know, I mean, people do like it when my best man, mate Ron comes on. Because we do seem to uh, click quite a lot, quite well together uh, on on screen, so to speak. I did try yesterday, funnily enough, and it's a shame we couldn't get it going. Because then, then you would have seen me moaning to him about his driving and moaning about us getting lost. But I did actually try and uh, put a camera on his dashboard in the car yesterday so it could film us while we were chatting. But unfortunately, uh, I don't have a very wide-angle lens on it. You can't attach 
a lens to the little video camera that I've got. I could, of course, record the audio, no problem at all with that. Um, I suppose I could put, uh, just, just, just do the audio, really. Um, but the camera didn't come back far enough. Also, you've got to hold it somehow. I'm not quite sure how to do that. So I did try and do that yesterday, but uh, was uh, unsuccessful. Any ideas like that at all, please do let us know. The email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Now, uh, one of the places I work, uh, I have a little video to show you that I've already made, uh, is the two breweries in Clapham in London. And there we've just started doing, uh, I've just started doing a uh, retro night, uh, 70s, 80s and 90s. Um, I got this idea when I was watching uh, X Factor last week. Not a programme that I like too much, apart from Sharon Osbourne. We all love Sharon Osbourne. The rest of them, not really get interested. Gary Barlow, very talented, very boring. Very boring and talent, uh, uh, talented but boring. Um, Louis Walsh, oh, do me a favour. And uh, Nicole Schwarzenegger, a little bit above herself, you know. Thinks she's beautiful, too much, but you know, a bit fake, a bit fake. But Sharon Osbourne, we love her. The real only reason I watched it is because I saw it was Disco Week, and they were singing all stuff like um, Jocelyn Brown, I thank the Lord for somebody else's guy, and stuff like that. And I was really into that music, so I watched it, and I thought, and if all the audience were going mad, I thought, let's do this. So we've started doing it on Thursday at the Two Brewers in Clapham every Thursday night from 10 p.m. Okay, so it's 10 p.m. till 2 a.m. every Thursday night uh, is Retro Night at the Two Brewers in Clapham, music from the 70s, 80s and 90s. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll, what, how can I advertise that? And I thought about it and I thought, let's make a little video. And I'll make a little video of me trying to sing some of the songs that I'm going to be playing. So I'm going to show you the video now and see what you think, okay? A little two minute video coming up for you here. Disco Thursday is every Thursday night at the Two Brewers in Clapham, London from 10pm. All the best disco music from the 70s, 80s and 90s. Now what I wanted to do was a little compilation of some of the tunes that I would play here. But copyright issues don't allow me to do that. You know what they're like? Oh, we want our money. Oh, I want that. Oh, I take, 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 take all the bloody time, dear. However, I can sing them to you in my own special way. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. Roll, roll, Rasputin, lover's greatest love machine. It was a shame how what? he carried... What? Not the sandals. What's wrong with the sandals? Not the sandals. You are the one who makes me feel so real. Burn, baby, burn, disco inferno. Burn, baby, burn. Mama. At Waterloo, Napoleon did sorry, sorry. surrender. It's not Waterloo. Oh, yeah. Hey? It's not Waterloo. What do you mean it's not Waterloo? It's Bracknell. Well, we know it's Bracknell. I know it's Bracknell. It doesn't have to be Waterloo, does it? I'm not getting on a train just to do this little thing to Waterloo. But it's not Waterloo. I know. Do I love you more and more? River deep, man, no, no, no higher. Looking for some hot stuff, baby, this evening. Well, you might want to come down and listen to the originals of those. Don't forget Disco Thursday every Thursday night at the Two Brewers in Clapham, London from 10 o'clock. I'll see you there. (laughs) 
There you are. That's uh, a, a little video that uh, I made this week to advertise the uh, the new Thursday night of the Two Brewers. Once again, uh, retro night between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. every Thursday night, Two Brewers in Clapham. And that's the sort of thing I was talking about. So I did that, that little video and I thought, well, maybe I should do little videos and introduce them into the show to make it a little bit more interesting. So, as I say, any sketches like that, anything that you've got a, an idea of that that might be interesting, do let us know on the email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, Marge says, do uh, sketches like uh, Mr Bean and your car. Yes, I quite like the Mr Bean sketches. We, we do like those. Um, <laughs> Terry H says he loves it how quiet I was in Waitrose well you see the thing is you know you, you, you should really ask for permission to do this thing uh, you know but for the sake of doing like 10 seconds of filming I thought oh just, just wait till there's no one around quickly whip the camera out and we'll do it quickly and that's why I was quiet in there <laughs> we, you gotta love Waitrose Terry we love Waitrose I'm a Waitrose boy you know that <laughs> I'm going to say hello to Ian Duff, who sends in an email, who says, uh, Hi, Chris, from Spain, I listened to 100% of your show. Ian, I thought, I don't know why I thought you was in Canada. Why do I think you're in Canada, Ian? I'm sure you were in Canada. He says, uh, the clocks have gone back here as well, so instead of getting up at five, I was awake at four. I thought this would be a good time to hear your show undisturbed by noise. Talking hotel guests. Oh, you must have. Oh, you was on a holiday, was you, Ian? Are you back in Canada now? Did you have a nice time in Spain? Send us an email. Tell us how it was in Spain. Tell us what sort of time you had there. I hope the weather was all right for you. Um, Marge enjoyed the video. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed that, Marge. James writes, Hi, Chris. It was nice to hear you talking about Cubs and Scouts. Oh yes, some of the best times of my lives was in the was in the Scouts. Really great time I had. We I used to be in a gang show and camping and cooking and all that business. James used to do that as well when I was a kid, and it was quite fun. Also, they have venture camps all over the country. I've been to the one in Essex called Gilwell Park. I've been there. I've been there. I'll never forget that. I think it was 17. And I got the flu. I got the flu while I was there. And I just stayed in the tent in bed. I was in a tent. Oh, it was terrible. Terrible. No one, no one looked after me, really. A bit disappointed. I didn't get looked after. Just got on with it. That happened twice, actually. Once in Gilwell Park. And once in a place called Chalfont Heights. Which was a scout camp as well. Two occasions where I got flu or, or a very bad cold. I think it was worse than a cold actually because I was sweating and everything while I was actually camping in a tent. And that isn't nice. It's not nice at all. James says it was like an adventure. I also like Cyber John's rant on gambling. It's so easy to get addicted, like John says. And you can easily fall into debt with these payday loans too. You were also talking about lending people money. There always seems to be somebody everyone knows who asks for money or something, but you never see it again. Oh, I've known a few people like that. I know one now, actually. I do know one now. It seems like these people never get caught. I even knew one person that was doing it and was winning that, whining that the bank was charging overdraft fees for going overdrawn there on their overdrafts. And I always say, don't give out what you can't afford from James. So thank you, James. Yeah, never, uh, as I said, <clears throat> my advice, never lend anyone any money unless you can afford to give it to them. Lend it to them on the understanding that you probably won't get it back. OK, never lend money to anyone. Really, honestly, that, that's my advice to you. Uh, finally on the show today, we've got a, another chat from Cyber John, who sends this in, together with a little message which says, um, hope this gets to you in time, best uh, regards from Cyber John. Now, uh, I meant to ring, read something out, oh yes, uh, Cyber John put this on his um, message last week, and he says, please could you give a shout out for a very well produced Halloween special that was part of the Suko show. She sent me an email yesterday with a single word, plinth, which is a joke on the old show. It must mean she's in better health. My show is found by Googling Cyberline and 1000 Mics. OK, so Cyber John does do his own show. and You can find that uh, by Googling Cyberline 
C-Y-B-E-R-L-I-N-E, and 1,000 Mics. That's where you'll find Cyber John's uh, show. So let's hear uh, what he's got to say for us this week. Cyber Forts for United Kingdom Talk from Cyber Hi, Chris. Talk. I've got a bit of a cough. I have to take some of those anti-misdemeanor tablets or whatever because I'm allergic to cats. This is my environment affecting me. Does, does the weather get you down? See, I was having a chat with my friend, Pastor Mark, and he mentioned something. Environment changes and affects our lives. He'd just been to Cyprus and walked around the wonderful towns and beaches and felt reinvigorated. He came back changed. The weird thing is that I had been thinking of this very topic some days earlier. Isn't it funny how these coincidences happen a little too often, where we think the same abstract thing at roughly the same time? There's definitely a, a mechanism like the cloud-based app that uh, you get on your, your iPhone that connects us as people to each other. We just haven't made a machine that can detect it or worked out that mechanism yet. Anyway, my friend came back to a dour, wet, dark England, and this contrast fermented his thoughts. Where you live is part of what creates you. It's the very same maxim that made the British Army General say, Lots of smoke and send in the Scottish boys when our soldier Queen Victoria was painting the world pink. Let me expound on two very different environments. It's a good way, a good scientific way of contrasting things. The first is Iceland, where my landlord, the bishop, used to have to travel when they had a NATO base up there, and the greatest problem that he encountered was the overly large suicide rates amongst American servicemen who could not adapt to the conditions of six months of darkness here and another six months of, of daylight. Whereas, of course, the Icelandics were already used to that. The most dire film I have ever seen was a three-hour black-and-white dirge of three Finnish men talking in a room and drinking coffee. At the end, one of them went outside and shot himself dead. Very art house, which is sometimes an appellation people intentionally and euphemistically ascribe to rubbish, boring cinema experiments. But isn't it funny how a lot of them come from the Scandinavian countries? The population of Greenland is a meagre 56,000, and even their flag is boring. Go and have a look at it. It doesn't even have any green on it. Iceland doesn't fare much better. But Bjork? She lives in a far sunnier climate these days. You can be guaranteed of that. What's the capital of Iceland? They haven't got any since the banks collapsed. Actually, that's not true. They're doing okay, and the dance scene is out of control. So... Back to the Mediterranean, where the environment, whether it is sun, sea or sangria, has resulted in a top-heavy, aged population in Italy, Greece and Turkey. It is not just that the younger people aren't having children, it's that more people are living far longer than in Northern Europe. Now I have been there, in southern Italy and Crete, and the pace of life is slower, the ambrosia of olive oil is ubiquitous, and the sunshine provides all the vitamin D you could ever desire. What is their secret? I think it's down to all three factors, and more subtle ones too. There is, however, an advantage in being nurtured in icy, dark conditions. The Finnish army, during World War II, exacted terrible casualties on the invading Russians, and they did it in good cheer and efficiently. So much so that Stalin sued for an advantageous peace. Don't mess with the Finnish, they'll finish you. Funny thing is, Chris, wherever you come from, whether it's a snowdrift in Uppsala, the ancient Cretan town of Heraklion, or even godforsaken Slough, you can always cherish it as home. Bring me sunshine, bring me smiles, bring me laughter, all... <coughs> oh, finishing off with that song from the great Morecambe and Wise... You couldn't wish for more than that. Thank you, Cyber John. Uh, your your little 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 rants have really become a part of our little uh, program. So thank you very much. Keep sending them in, please. Um, you were saying about weather <clears throat> uh, changing our lives. Certainly, yes. I've experienced this twice in the last week. Now uh, you may notice today I'm the voice is fine. No problem with the breathing. Listen, no wheezing. <sighs> No wheezing at all. But there were two days in the last uh, couple of weeks, actually, that my breathing uh, does seem to have been affected. And on both days, it, it, it was when it had suddenly become cold. 
um, not gradually, suddenly, or an air pressure change. I believe this is the biggest cause of my asthma problems. How is it today that I've not needed this? My little asthma puffer thing. Not needed it today, right? And yet, um, last week on Thursday, and the week before, I think Friday or Thursday, just before, literally hours before we had the storm, the asthma started kicking off. And much to the point that you have so much of this, and it's not working. And you've got this tight chest. And I'm thinking, oh my God, this isn't working now. And of course, actually, the more you think about it, the worse it becomes. Oh, it's not getting better. Well, it happened Thursday again. And I was actually doing the um, uh, the new night of the two brewers, the, the new retro night. And fortunately, I saw an, uh, a bloke who goes in there who's an ambulance uh, person. And I says, um, all right, can I just ask you, my bloody test is up. This asthma thing, oh, I said it'd be cold weather. Straight away, the cold weather. I said, well, it's funny you should say that. I have noticed that. If it goes from quite warm, and it has been unseasonably warm. We've had temperatures of 15 degrees last week. That's centigrade, so that's 15, 30, that's about 60, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And it went from that to very cold suddenly, and then it starts. You know, <laughs> you know, and you have that, usually works, and then sometimes it doesn't seem to work. Or you have to do it a few times. It's, it's almost as if that pipe that goes down into your lungs, it's all jammed up. Right? So you have one, and the top bit will open. So you'll have another bit, a bit, couple of minutes later, the next bit will open. And you'll have another bit, and the next bit will open. You're kind of, you know, rather than all opening at the same time, it's almost as if you have to clear the blockage gradually. Isn't it? But definitely the cold weather does seem to um, affect me as well, uh, uh, John. I, I do believe that. Or maybe air pressure changes or something like that does seem to affect it. You know. I actually don't believe it's my cat anymore because it would be there all the time, wouldn't it? I, uh, for a long time, I thought it was the cat giving me the problems, but I don't think it is anymore. I think it's more to do with the weather. And as I say, no problem at all today. It is cold today, but it hasn't suddenly changed. It's been cold now for a couple of days. So I, I do believe it is that. Right, we're going to disappear now, boys and girls. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Any more um, emails come in there at the last minute? No. Only from Marjorie says, I have problems breathing when very hot and humid. No, that, no, that doesn't affect me at all. It just seems to affect people in a different way, doesn't it, Marge? Eh? So that's it. Don't forget, uh, if you've got any uh, ideas at all for little sketches that I could do during the week, you know, maybe one or two minutes, um, uh, do, a, do a report or... I know you'd like to see a little bit of um, sort of me and Ronnie chatting about various things. I could just set the camera up when he comes round in the living room and you can hear what we're talking about and who we're, who we're chatting and who we're running down. And I'll, I'll do that as well, OK? Thanks for watching and listening to the show today. Don't forget uh, the email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk You can subscribe to the audio version of the show by going to iTunes. Just go into iTunes and type in United Kingdom Talk there you'll find the United uh, the audio version. Click subscribe. You can subscribe to the YouTube version of the show. My YouTube name is Chris Reardon UK. All one word, Chris Reardon UK. Click the subscribe there, and um, you get a, an email notification thing to 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 just put a little dot in there, and then you'll get an email whenever there's a new show. And uh, on Facebook, I'm on Facebook as well. Facebook username, Chris Reardon UK, and Twitter as well, Chris Reardon UK. All right? So how many times have I just said my name in the last two minutes? Good God. See you soon. Oh, and of course you can join us live. <clears throat> Join us live as well, boys and girls, every Saturday afternoon at 12 o'clock UK time. We're on GMT now, OK? 12 o'clock UK time is when you can join us for the show live. How do you find that? Simply go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. At the top, you will see a link to where the live show appears. And usually, we start usually around about 11 o'clock in the morning. You get like a dude, a tone, and then you get about half an hour of music, and then I come on at 12, and then you can join in live by Skype and telephone. All right? Thanks so much for watching and listening. I'll see you next Saturday. All right? Have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye now.